Uh, quite, quite a pleasure to <laughs> talk about complexity in the, in the heart of Venetia, which is a very complex network, uh, mm, uh, mm, as we all uh, know. Uh, mm, uh, so I will um, try to discuss with big subject, uh, evolution of complexity today, uh, mm, drawing connections which I think are serious connections uh, about um, uh, between theory of learning, um, biological evolution, uh, and thermodynamics. And then emphasize the importance of frustrated states in particular uh, for um, uh, the evolution of uh, complexity. I guess this is such an um, intimate situation uh, in such a small group that so please interrupt me whenever I like. Mm, all right. This, of course, wouldn't work. Mm, let's see how it works the, this way. No, no. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, yes, sorry, I cannot move the slides. Mm. <laughs> well, there is nothing I can do. Oh, yeah, I can. Oh, OK. OK. Very good. Uh, mm, uh, so I think it is a mm, it's appropriate to start here uh, with this mm, uh, famous uh, book by by Schrödinger, uh, mm, "What is Life: The Physical Aspect of the Living Cell," which he published in another dark period in, in, in the theory in the history of civilization back in 1944. Um, mm, uh, but 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 he was. Um, thinking deeply uh, about the uh, nature of life and social media. Um, not as deeply, of course. Um, so, so in that book, basically, um, Schrodinger proposed two or uh, three major ideas. Um, one was that of the quote unquote, a periodic crystal, um, uh, which, which was his vision of um, heredity, um, uh, which was not chemically understood at the time. Uh, the other was that the organism feeds upon what um, Schrodinger called, perhaps not optimally, uh, negative entropy, and therefore, um, or by, by feeding the negative entropy, organisms are capable of keeping them, themselves in an organized state. Uh, and, and the third, more general, but, but I think a very important statement was that living matter, while not eluding the laws of physics as established up to date, is likely to involve other laws of physics, mm, emergent laws, as we would say now, um, uh, which will become an as integral a part of science as the former once they are discovered. And, the, and what we shall do um, in this discussion is touch upon all of these subjects and sort of see how they look today. 70 years later, more than 70 years later. Uh, so to continue with the introduction, um, uh, this, this is um, another paper of two very prominent physicists published um, much later, 20 years ago, which um, tells us something, something that I think we always uh, keep in mind, that basically the theory of everything already exists. In principle, everything um, around us um, is, uh, should be explainable um, uh, by the um, equations of, of quantum physics. Um, uh, except, as uh, these authors aptly note, the theory of everything is not even remotely the theory of everything. Uh, in order to, uh, uh, and these equations are, are quite correct and underlined everything in principle, are quite also quite useless for understanding uh, what surrounds us and life in particular. Uh, uh, so uh, we have to look at, as we can put it very aptly, as yet undiscovered organizing principles that might be at work at the mesoscopic scale um, as well as macroscopic scale. And, and this is what, what I think we want to do. 
the more um, uh, introduction uh, here directly, directly uh, um, into what we are um, talking about. Uh, um, uh, this famous, uh, famous paper uh, um, uh, by uh, Philip Anderson, uh, um, uh, another Nobel Prize winner uh, in physics, uh, published uh, um, uh, exactly uh, 50 years ago. Uh, more is different. The nature of the hierarchical uh, structure of uh, um, uh, science. Basically, what it says is that at different levels of scientific inquiry, as well as the different levels of the organization of the universe, of um, the entities at the higher level uh, um, follow, obey uh, the laws uh, established at the lower level. Uh, but uh, um, uh, this is, uh, um, uh, but these, these higher levels of organization also can be profitably described phenomenologically in terms of um, emergent uh, um, uh, phenomena. Uh, humoristically, this was um, in, uh, related in, in, in in the brief conversation of by Scott Fitzgerald and Ernst Hemingway in some Parisian bar, the rich are different from us, suggested Fitzgerald. They were very poor at the time. Uh, and Hemingway uh, returns, yes, they had more money. Uh, uh, so uh, perhaps the difference is not just that they have more money, or perhaps uh, there is some more qualitative difference with such phenomena we are going to discuss. Uh, so my subject today uh, uh, is uh, um, uh, evolution of complexity. Um, and this is sort of an um, equivocal subject, um, <clears throat> a bit embarrassing, because we are going to um, discuss evolution of something that um, uh, is very elusive. No one really knows what it is and how to define. Um, in this uh, um, well-known paper by Seth Lloyd, uh, um, some, something like a decade ago, um, 40 uh, um, uh, different definitions have been uh, introduced, which surely means that there isn't one optimal definition or correct definition. If you will. Um, and to, to quote uh, Justice Porter Stewart uh, um, on the uh, subject of the definition of obscenity in, 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 uh, in, uh, that was uh, presented to the Supreme Court back in 1964. Uh, I know it when I see it. Um, same with complexity. Um, when we see it, for instance, like shown here in this succession from a relatively simple crystal uh, uh, through the DNA structure, through the bacteriophage particle to the organization of the living cell eukaryotic. In this case, I think we have no doubt uh, that the arrow of complexity goes in this direction, that complexity grows here. Even if we, 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 when we see it, we know it, even if uh, mm, uh, we cannot define it uh, mm, uh, precisely in a satisfactory manner. Um, mm, but let us try to understand, nevertheless, uh, mm, uh, something about how complexity may evolve. Mm. Uh, mm, uh, so much by way of introduction, uh, mm, and uh, mm, we shall now discuss the uh, connection uh, between complexity, uh, mm, learning, uh, theory of learning, and in particular multi level uh, learning. I will explain in greater detail what I mean by that, uh, mm, and uh, mm, uh, thermodynamics. Uh, this is, except for the last uh, bit of my lecture. We shall see whether I get time to come to it or not. Um, but, but the main body of what I'm going to um, discuss is published in these recent papers um, uh, and was done in collaboration with these colleagues of mine, who I'm happy to acknowledge, uh, two physicists, uh, Vitaly Venturin, uh, who was a long-term visitor in my lab, uh, Misha Kastelson from um, Radboud University in Nijmegen in the Netherlands, and one biologist, 
a senior member of my lab, Yuri Wolf. So that was the team um, that um, developed um, all these concepts and ideas. Uh, and indeed, uh, I should have gone that um, today we really will touch very little um, on specific data. It's really sort of a conceptual uh, discussion. The flow of information in general is organized like this. Um, at the highest level, highest level, we have theory. Artificial networks, as well as theory of thermodynamics and theory of evolution. And in the top down direction, uh, we can make uh, uh, predictions uh, from here of phenomenological features. Uh, and from uh, moving further, from the top down, we can um, uh, predict uh, the uh, behavior of specific empirical uh, uh, data. Uh, in the flow of information in the bottom up uh, direction, though, uh, comprises different level of learning. I refer to multi level learning, and we should talk more about it, but some, some glimpse of that we already have here. Uh, and uh, now, in the next couple of minutes, I'll do something very audacious in a sense. Uh, because when, with my colleagues, we started thinking uh, about um, how it might be possible to connect uh, um, biological evolution, the processes of learning and uh, um, thermodynamics, uh, um, we thought that we must, it wasn't really working for us then. And, the, and we thought that we must first formulate what is it about uh, um, life that we want to explain? What are the signatures of or axioms of life, if you will, uh, uh, that we uh, uh, want to understand. Then we came with the decalogue of such potential um, signature for axioms. Mm -hmm. So first, to begin, life is always organized and we submit it, it must be in distinct information processing units, such as cell, orga cell organisms, populations, etc., that are subject to selection for persistence or stability. Um, living systems are always uh, fraught by mm, frustration, uh, mm, um, which means, uh, borrowing the, co mm, the precise concept from condensed matter physics, uh, mm, conflict, uh, conflicting objectives on, di on a different scale, optimization of different functions on mm, um, mm, um, different uh, scales. For instance, uh, mm, different objective, evolutionary objectives for individual cells versus, uh, versus multicellular organisms. Uh, mm, we shall discuss more of that, uh, mm, but the point here is that mm, uh, frustration is conflicts uh, and uh, mm, frustration uh, mm, are ma a major driver of the uh, evolution of uh, uh, complexity in life and more generally in the entire world. Uh, mm, we further insist on multi-level hierarchy of scales and accordingly multi-level selection. That is, um, um, multi-level selection um, is not something that we invent, or it has been invented by others, uh, mm, or conceptualized by others. It remains somewhat um, controversial perspective in evolutionary biology. Uh, many evolutionary biologists would insist uh, that uh, selection only operates at a certain one level, or uh, let us say the level of individual organisms, which is how it most often uh, uh, perceived. Uh, uh, but uh, what we submit here uh, is that um, uh, for the um, evolution of life as we know it, for evolution of complexity, multi-level selection, the existence of units of selection at different levels is essential. Stochastic optimization that leads to near optimality. Um, that is, evolving systems occupy local or uh, minima on fitness landscapes. Uh, and these solutions are diverse. Uh, fitness landscapes are uh, rugged with many um, uh, peaks and valleys. Separation from genotype from phenotype in other words, in terms of 
computer science, um, digital versus analog information, um, the asymmetric information flow, which is captured in the so-called central dogma of molecular biology. We shall discuss this in greater detail shortly. Uh, replication of digital information carriers, uh, better known as nucleic acids, RNA and DNA. Uh, uh, this is um, uh, this does not um, uh, require um, further explanations, I suppose. Um, natural selection. Natural selection actually, uh, and this requires some comment, I think. Um, uh, natural selection in by itself is an emergent phenomenon. It's not an intrinsic property of nature. It's an emergent phenomenon coming from these other principles. We mention it here because it's so um, enormously uh, important, uh, but um, it actually follows from other uh, uh, more basic uh, uh, principles. Uh, emergence of parasites, host parasite coevolution. Uh, parasites are inevitable in any evolving uh, uh, system. Um, and host parasite coevolution promotes um, evolution of complexity. And finally, program, after all these features of life, program death, which is also a feature of life. Uh, and in particular, program cell death is a general um, capacity or, um, or function or um, um, intrinsic to all uh, um, cells, but it occurs to other levels as well and um, again promotes evolution. At even higher level of abstraction, uh, from this we um, try to derive some more general principles of system uh, um, evolution and learning, which uh, um, we believe underlie uh, in evolution of our complexity uh, in, in biology in more generally. And the first, the first and probably the most um, important of such principles is optimization. The existence of what in the theory of learning is called loss um, uh, function uh, varies in thermodynamics. This is called free energy. Uh, and in, um, in evolution, it's called fitness, as we show. Um, see um, and um, uh, discuss. Um, any evolving uh, learning system um, is associated with, or can be associated with uh, some function that is minimal, that is extremized uh, uh, during uh, uh, evolution. In a sense, it's quite conceivable that all the other features that we discuss here um, fall from the um, existence of the, um, 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 of the optimization process. Nevertheless, um, we, um, it's important also to keep in mind other principles. And these are hierarchy of scales um, um, uh, where multiple dynamical variables change on different temporal scales. We shall discuss this in greater detail, of course. Um, separated by frequency gaps. Not only uh, there must be um, distinct hierarchical levels um, in any complex system, but they should be um, separated by sufficiently large uh, frequency gaps. Renormalizability, uh, um, a key um, uh, physical notion, uh, um, evidently, um, which um, uh, indicates that um, pretty much the same principles, the same laws, the same equations are applicable um, at, um, at different levels. What we call um, um, extension, the ability of um, evolving or learning systems uh, to recruit uh, um, additional uh, um, uh, variables, replication and elimination, and um, asymmetric information um, uh, flow, whereby slower changing levels absorb information from faster changing levels in the process of learning and pass information down to the faster levels for prediction of the state of the uh, um, environment. Um, we believe that these are more or less, um, uh, this more or less a description of the general principles uh, that underlie and ensure um, the existence and evolution of complex systems. So let's uh, talk on uh, some more specifics. Uh, so the process of uh, learning. Uh, uh, during 
uh, learning the loss function is minimized with respect to uh, uh, trainable variables uh, for um, a given training data set of non um, trainable variables. Uh, we put these indices here, O and E, uh, to um, the biology in mind or uh, to indicate that these non trainable variables pertain either to the environment or uh, to the state of, of the of, um, organism itself. And there are also three uh, categories of trainable variables. Uh, this, this denotes uh, core or constant uh, um, uh, ones uh, um, uh, at a given time scale. Um, these are adoptable ones that are actually um, uh, changing uh, um, um, by um, uh, extracting information from uh, non-trainable variables. And these are neutral ones that change, but do not react to uh, non-trainable uh, 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 variables. So to, 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 to speak very simply in biological terms, it's not, something is going not entirely right with my slides. Maybe. All right, but not now. We will, we will manage anyhow. Uh, so uh, um, uh, adaptable variables on the scale of the lifetime of, of, of an organism, any of us, um, are phenotypic traits that quickly react to uh, environmental changes, react in a certain ways to, say, temperature change, change in the environment. There are uh, various uh, core variables, this QC, are genomic sequences that at this time scale change minimally, if at all. Or in a, on evolutionary time scales, though, genomic sequences are transformed into uh, adaptable uh, uh, variables, creating, importantly, a new level in the hierarchy, a new level of learning. So, at a certain level of abstraction, uh, evolving organisms can be uh, presented as uh, neural networks uh, where uh, these, uh, these external nodes represent non-trainable environmental variables or non-trainable organismal variables down here. Uh, 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 there is uh, these uh, uh, neurons uh, represent, uh, and these uh, represent uh, trainable variables at um, different levels. Here, just simplistically um, show them at the levels of phenotype and at the level of genotype. So for any time scale, all variables can be partitioned to, um, schematically, but nevertheless, into um, three classes, dependent on how fast they change with respect to a um, given uh, time scale. Uh, the fast non-trainable uh, variables, the intermediate adoptable variables or neutral variables that change regardless of the non-trainable ones, and the slow uh, um, uh, variables that have already been equilibrated. Um, and in the process of Evolution variables migrate between classes, creating new levels. Um, in a bit of a technicality, which may not be central here, but nevertheless, we are indicating uh, non trainable variables are modeled as changing in discrete time steps, like uh, this, and trainable. Mm, uh, variables are modeled as changing, uh, as changing according to um, mm, stochastic gradient descent algorithm, typically, um, where this is good to note, I think, uh, mm, where uh, mm, this is a mm, uh, loss uh, function that depends on these variables, and this is the uh, mm, learning rate parameter. Um, so there, uh, the loss function can be uh, um, defined in uh, uh, different uh, ways, and what it basically what it reflects in um, in simple terms uh, is the ability of the system to predict the state of the environment or its own state, the state of the organism. 
um, uh, so um, it can be um, um, defined as a so-called boundary whose function there um, um, uh, this um, um, these errors of prediction are um, um, summed over boundary variables only those that directly interact with the environment or as a bulk of function where summation goes over all variables uh, including those that relate to the um, organism um, itself and here um, there are kinetic there is a kinetic term um, uh, here uh, that um, reflects the ability of the system to predict changes in the given environment and the potential term that reflects the ability to choose among environments. Uh, so so uh, this is, I think, a, a key point uh, to, to, to note uh, that loss function uh, is, is a direct uh, equivalent of, um, of the fitness, fun, of, of fitness in uh, um, evolutionary uh, um, uh, biology, uh, which can be conveniently connected by um, uh, this uh, um, equation, uh, where T uh, um, is something that can be thought of as evolutionary temperature, measure of stochasticity of, um, of the evolutionary process, which is more or less the uh, um, inverse of the effective of population size, if we remember um, the fundamentals of um, uh, population um, genetics, uh, where, um, whereby in a large population, uh, T is low, and the, what happens is deterministic, uh, largely or completely in the infinite limit, uh, whereas in a small population, uh, T is high, and, and so um, uh, evolution occurs um, stochastically. So basically by minimizing loss function or maximizing fitness, the system learns progressively better um, to predict the environment. Um, so I think I basically um, already sort of introduced this, but this is, is really a, a key. Uh, um, uh, concept here uh, um, uh, as, as illustrated by these simplistic diagrams, uh, um, namely that variable migrate between different uh, classes and what does not change, let us say the highly conserved core genes in the genome. They don't change even on the scale of millions of years of evolution, but they do change uh, um, um, in a consequential manner. Uh, mm, uh, on the scale of billions of years. So variables migrate between classes, uh, mm, thereby generating new uh, mm, levels of learning, and mm, which is equivalent to uh, mm, new levels of uh, mm, selection. So mm, what we mm, uh, believe is the case is that the general evolutionary principles of evolution, including evolutional complexity, follow directly from learning dynamics. In particular, uh, multi-level selection uh, um, uh, follows from uh, um, multi-level uh, um, uh, um, learning. And the um, um, emergence of, um, of the new levels of uh, um, evolution, um, um, uh, um, of learning or evolution, is what underlies the uh, um, emergence of uh, complexity. Uh, all this is at least in principle renormalizable, such as the same principles and equations, um, in particular those for the loss function, apply at all levels. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah. Is there a new Because, 
these processes are renormalizable and that is important that they describe the processes of learning constellation with the same equations at different levels. Um, there will be a level of genes, organisms, populations, etc. etc. I am not I'm not claiming that this is some kind of um, enforced or um, separate principle, but I think this is a very important feature of this system. <laughs> mm, mm, uh, so, mm, uh, mm, so about the central dogma of molecular biology. Mm, mm, uh, this is a famous diagram from a mm, 1970 paper by Francis Crick, uh, mm, uh, which mm, uh, which he drew and wrote that little note uh, mm, in response to the discovery of the enzyme known as reverse transcriptase, which catalyzes the, mm, mm, which was a very unexpected discovery, uh, which uh, catalyzes the um, mm, um, formation of DNA on an RNA template. Um, mm, so what, what Crick formulated um, in that paper was that all kinds of or in interconversions between nucleic acids were possible in biology and important um, to a different ex to different extents, but um, the flow of information from nucleic acids to protein uh, um, um, uh, is um, microscopically irreversible, uh, um, uh, and that is a key uh, um, uh, feature of uh, um, uh, biological systems and. As we submit here, um, a key feature of any uh, complex system, uh, whereby uh, there is the information prediction phase, uh, uh, which includes fast information flow from slow change variables such as the genome to the faster changing variables such as the phenotype uh, through uh, multiple levels, basically like this expression of genes, uh, um, the deformation of RNA, and translation, the deformation of uh, um, uh, proteins that react uh, to the changes in the environment. Uh, the reverse flow of information is a learning phase, that is slow information flow from fast changing to slow changing variables, which is by no account uh, a microscopic reversal of the prediction phase. There is never reverse translation, never synthesis of, of a nucleic acid molecule or on a, a, a protein a, a, a template. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a completely different process of which involves slow stochastic changes in the genome and the and, and fixation uh, through the processes of natural selection and uh, uh, genetic uh, uh, drift. Uh, and it appears there is a more formal derivation given in this paper. It appears that um, um, slow variables have to be largely independent from fast variables to um, um, determine temporally stable rules uh, that are essential uh, um, uh, for the learning process or for the evolution of any uh, um, complex system. As I, as I announced, uh, in, in the beginning, I would like to speak about frustrated states, uh, namely different learning or uh, evolutionary uh, objectives uh, at a uh, different uh, level, uh, which lead uh, to the evolution of complexity uh, through the process known as self-organized criticality, uh, resulting in uh, multi-level selection. So competing interactions are um, seen. Again, remembering generalizability. Competing interaction and frustrated states are seen at every level of biology um, and at every level of all complexes. Um, now, for instance, starting with even protein structures, protein folding, where um, different um, types of bonds operate at different um, um, spatial um, uh, scales creating a frustrated state which underlies the process of folding. Um, um, through gene regulation network and cell membranes and very prominently 
um, the conflict between uh, um, um, uh, cooperating replicators and uh, parasitic elements, uh, host cells and viruses, um, and host cells and different um, types of um, um, selfish um, uh, genetic elements. Uh, most notably, uh, of course, um, at the level of um, multicellular and um, unicellular organisms, where the, so to speak, interests of um, individual cells and the entire organism, the ensemble of cells, um, can be um, quite um, different. And um, this um, inter um, conflict between intercellular competitions, the selection for um, a proliferation of individual um, cells um, as opposed to cooperation uh, between uh, cells leads to such important phenomenon as cancer and aging. Now, uh, a little bit about thermodynamics, um, and because this is a, what, what, what was announced in the beginning, is really a trial, evolution, learning, and thermodynamics. So, so we have been speaking about uh, learning and uh, evolution. And now let's inject thermodynamics. And following uh, the work of my colleague, Vitaly Manchurin, uh, uh, formulate the laws of learning, which, um, are, which correspond to the um, laws of thermodynamics, uh, but work differently. In, this, in particular, the second law, um, uh, according to which the um, total entropy of a learning system um, um, increases, um, uh, decreases until this, uh, the system um, reaches what it may be called uh, um, learning uh, um, equilibrium. Uh, um, uh, this uh, um, second law pretty much embodies uh, um, in slightly more formal terms, uh, the um, idea of the increase in local uh, complexity that Schrodinger in, in, his, in his book uh, introduced through the um, concept of neg entropy, uh, whereby um, organisms sort of extract, um, that is extract energy from the environment and um, accordingly uh, um, can uh, um, uh, lower or uh, um, local entropy uh, um, until yes. But in this analogy with the, with the standard thermodynamics, the small cues are the extensive variables, but the big cues are the intensive. Mm -hmm. So well, you know, why is that? I mean, how can you say that the internal, internal, external variables are extensive? Why not the reverse one? Let me let me get let me get this. So you know, if I if you are asking me whether the training external variable is extensive, I, I could not answer it, but maybe you can give me why this is uh, an extensive variable. I mean if if you have this analogy and uh thermodynamics, uh, yes, it has to be this way, right? It has to be that the small q has to be extensive, yes, the big q has to be intensive. So my question is uh, how can I say that they know? I mean, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't tell that the, the, the trainer of the external variable is an extensive one. You know? Why is that? Is it my... oh, mm. I would just ask you whether it's a fundamental reason. What are the fundamental reasons? Clearly, um, uh, this is this is. Um, um, formulated um, um, in um, biology with the first law of thermodynamics, mm -hmm. um, uh, very uh, clearly. Uh, um, so, um, um, uh, so Q is in this case analogous to entropy, right? Analogous to entropy, right? Right, and therefore, therefore it's extensive. As, as, I, as I understand this. Oh, 
um, uh, so um, so what we what we can draw here, as shown in this table, is a detailed mapping of, um, uh, between uh, thermodynamics uh, between the key variables of uh, thermodynamics, learning, and um, um, evolution of uh, um, populations. Actually, the general idea of, of the mapping of, um, of um, population evolution onto thermodynamics is very old. Um, it, um, sort of, it, it was suggested, but not really developed by Ronald Fisher himself, in, in something like, like 1930. Uh, uh, but of course, the idea of learning was not there. Um, and it wasn't developed um, in detail. Um, these days, however, um, I think we can um, draw the, all the parallels, um, understanding very simply that in each case, uh, we are dealing with large ensembles of entities, uh, molecules, particles, neurons, or individuals in the population or genes in the genome, uh, which can also be uh, represented uh, in that way. And accordingly, I guess this is, is the main issue, um, accordingly, uh, we had the uh, analogs of um, the correspondence uh, between uh, temperature and the respective uh, measures that can be uh, described uh, or that can be uh, uh, that are operative also uh, in, uh, in, in, in machine learning and in evolutionary uh, biology there as we already discussed uh, so called what may be called uh, evolutionary temperature uh, is a measure of stochasticity as it is in, in physical systems as well. Um, and we can introduce the relationship between energy and fitness, as well as the notion of entropy um, and the notion of uh, potential, which is in a sense the ability to change. Mm, uh, so um, of the imp an important concept in evolutionary biology is the idea of major transition or um, major transition in evolution, such as origin of cells, such as the origin of eukaryotic, more complex cells, such as the origin of multicellularity, youth sociality, and society. Um, and what, what these, these developments suggest is that these uh, um, evolutionary transitions are actually physical um, phase transitions um, in the in the strict sense. Um, uh, to, to try to understand these, these transitions uh, um, through um, uh, thermodynamics and, and, and learning uh, um, uh, theory, we um, um, express the average loss function like this through these conjugate variables, the evolutionary temperature and evolutionary potential. Mm. Uh, and if we, it's a very, very simplistic equation that however tells something about it. I think of the, in, the, in the published paper there is a greater, uh, more, more detailed derivation of this, um, no, but, but this says, says something important, I think. Uh, namely that uh, transition occurs where the grand potential of an one type of ensemble, ensemble of molecules becomes equal to the grand potential of a biological system. That is a, a, a transition point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Major evolution is steps, yes. But still, I, I think if, if you're not really, there's no such thing as a 
uh, actually, uh, they look at the major of Mr. Kamonsky, but at the scale of the movement, it should be the same as any other scale. It, uh, I'm sorry, I don't get it. The kinds of changes that allowed nuclear uh, cells and nuclear cells to happen, uh, the changes when you add the scale, there's another dimension of how it can change. But the actual change in the pattern of the scale of the cells was the same as any other change in the pattern. And the same as the other. So the, it's not that suddenly new kinds of change happen because of that sudden we to be uh, we got more vascularity. The same change has ever happened, but it's been filled up the one scale and add another. Oh, oh, I, well, I, I would like to understand what you're saying. Oh, but, but it, it, in each of these transitions, indeed, a new level of organization and accordingly a new level of selection is introduced. Mm, mm. But using but, but until it becomes sort of let's say populated, until there were already multicellular organisms or until the kind of system, at that phase where it shifts, all of the actions are still the actions of the old scale. There's no something something you need from outside, some other trick. Or oh, mm, mm, mm. not really. Or oh, mm. consider consider multicellularity for, for the greater clarity, because this is this is sort of paradigmatic case oh, in, in a way. Oh, mm. So oh, mm. before that before the transition point, oh, mm. selection applies to individual cells. Uh, and the thickness is pretty much the rate of their reproduction. Whoever uh, reproduces faster, uh, given the current capacity of the environment, but, but generally whoever reproduces faster uh, wins the competition, right? Uh, um, when they leaving aside for a moment, or we can discuss it too, but leaving aside for a moment uh, the evolutionary forces that drive the emergence of multicellularity. The cells get together. And now there is a conflict between uh, mm, mm, uh, the uh, mm, selection for reproduction of individual cells and the selection for reproduction of the entire ensemble of cells, the entire organ. So this is the new level of selection and the system using the language that I was using must learn to um, reconcile these levels. Uh, um, uh, that is not allow the individual cells to proliferate as fast as they would like, um, so to speak. Um, so, so I think this is uh, um, more or less the description of um, each of these uh, transitions. Again, the crucial thing is that uh, um, the new level of the in the hierarchy. Um, um, emerges and becomes an agency of selection. All right. Uh, I, 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 I thought I would, I would talk also some about the origin of life uh, in, in more specific terms, but I think we have, I, I think I have introduced the concepts that perhaps it's better to Mm -hmm. to discuss more if anyone wants and anyhow thank you very much for your attention <laughs>
because I expect they would be one of these. And do we expect to, there to be a huge amount of universality classes, or do we expect the phenomenon of universality to be quite constrained? Or do you ever consider the problem of this one? I remember making this question also to Satamari one time, and, and he didn't do it from this one. This was like five, six years ago. I want to you know if your group is considering this, this input since you stress renormalizability. And if you want renormalizability, is the technical name for the field of universality. It's yes. The broad standard of the okay. phenomena at uh, large scales. Yes, indeed. This is. So, what I mean by renormalizability. What are the classes of universality? I think we are all oh, mm, uh, we view it all on, mm, from the mm, in the language of population genetics, from, mm, uh, mm, uh, mm, from the point of view of um, selection and genetic direct. Uh, mm, um, uh, so mm, it, mm, each level. There is an equivalent of temperature or effective population size, which is which are, which are variables, or, um, uh, which defines um, the power of selection and the contribution of random data. Uh, um, so um, um, uh, these processes can be discussed, uh, can be um, considered at all different levels, um, starting from uh, individual genes to the organelles within a, let us say, eukaryotic cell, between individual cells, between organisms in a population, between groups, between uh, um, uh, populations of uh, um, organisms, um, um, etc., and higher and between communities, societies. Um, um, even ecosystems of um, anything that 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 anything that evolves. So I think that the universality class um, is this um, process of selection and drift of the, which is described by the same type of formalism where however of um, the um, nature of the units is different. But this is how I see it. I don't it's, it's a good question. You you make me you make me formulate it, but this I think I think this is how to be a little bit more specific. Do you know a model, a toy model to describe your step from eukaryotic cells to multicellular? So do we have a model like one statistical mechanics? I don't know, devising model of any of this transition. Because when we go to auto equilibrium. At one point, you expect that the theory of universality of equilibrium will embrace a lot of different things, but then we have directed perforation, and then we have right. a, a, a little zoology of things, but there is no general theory. And here, you want something that I think will mix chemistry with also random geometry, because I think that the element of geometry is very important because you are a sample. So maybe yeah. we have uh, some theories that explain uh, fluid membranes, crystalline membranes. But I have never seen people trying to put together all this into the concrete statistical mechanical realization of the problem of this book. Oh, um, fantastic question, of course, no. We, some, um, some, I think, models have been described trying to explain development and multicellularity, indeed, but I don't think that the of um, uh, integral approach that you are advocating very rightly have been developed. I don't believe so. Yeah, along the same line, I mean, so the, this also figured my mind because if you, know, if you push this uh, analogy, if, you know, if, if you need statistical mechanics to give predictions because there are many arms can only give you relations between uh, variables, right? You need, a, yeah. you need a microscopic model to start with. So, 
and, and uh, he was asking, I, I guess, whether there is such a microscopic model. Um, otherwise, it, 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 there is no way in which you can give predictions. So, <laughs> the model now. Let me let me let me proceed a little bit. I don't want to discuss this, but let me proceed to one slide here that uh, represents some data. Uh, um, um, the data from a very particular source, um, from comparison of the genomes um, you know, of the, of the um, notorious SARS-CoV-2 virus. Um, so um, the main prediction of that, uh, what is one of the main predictions that comes from all these, um, all these concepts, um, you know, is the Emergence of different levels of organization in the course of evolution. And this slide shows the distribution of the distances between genomes of this virus at different phases of the pandemic. Early in the pandemic, this kind of bell shaped uh, unimodal, uh, uh, unimodal distribution. Uh, uh, unimodal distribution, and this is late in the pandemic. The, the distribution evolves into bimodal one. In a way, I think, uh, we have not investigated this in every detail, uh, uh, but in a way, uh, I think this is uh, very uh, well compatible uh, with the predictions of this concept. What? Is the virus is evolving in neutron? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. It has to be uh, more, maybe explained in slightly better. Uh, basically, what you do here um, uh, is, um, is calculate the entire distance matrix between all the between thousands and thousands of genomes that can be sequenced. It's having distances and, 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 and the metrics are probably again all against all. And you plot these distances, and you have this sort of normal like distribution. Um, and then time passes, and you do the same after several months or years, something like that. And instead of getting this, you get this. Mm -hmm. So there's groups that are um, uh, separated now by large distances, and there are many of, um, of the genomes in these groups. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, those that are separated by, oh, oh sorry, no, by longer distances here and by shorter distances. Mm -hmm. and, and the middle sort of drops down. Uh, so so the, the, the thing differentiates, uh, creating new, new levels of organization. Okay. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not claiming uh, that. Uh, mm, uh, framework is the only way to predict it. I'm not, I'm not doing this. Um, no, but, but, I, but I do suggest it's local. So there is a question by Steve. Steve, please. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I was actually looking forward to, to hearing about the origin of life story. I, I think that you have argued quite well for, for, for this comparison or for, for, for looking at parallels between uh, sort of the, uh, the the traditional physics perspective and this neural network perspective and, and evolutionary uh, biology perspective, but I I'm uh, and that once you have an evolutionary process, you know there is a sort of well known that you can uh, view that as an optimization and and so forth and so on. But yeah, uh, I'm very interested in in hearing, and I don't quite understand. I try to read your paper, and I'm sort of um, you're losing me in. Uh, in uh, how how uh, uh, this transition, how you you, uh, you you seem to 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 show that you have a phase transition here. So it, if you could if, if you could somehow help us understand what what you are uh, what you are thinking there, that would be very helpful. Mm, um, so, so 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 let's then talk about uh, a little bit about the <clears throat> origin of life and how we see uh, that. Uh, transition, uh, because it may 
it's important in itself and may um, give some uh, um, uh, some perspective. Uh, um, so what we have here basically is the transition from chemistry to <clears throat> uh, biology. Uh, um, uh, where these variables have these, these variables have um, uh, different meanings. How this happens, or um, how this happened, um, we believe, is again through the emergence of a new level of organization. That new level of organization corresponds uh, um, to the union of, of what is called reproducers and what is called replicators. Reproducers are more or less cells, physical entities that um, for the reproduction of which digital information is insufficient that requires physical continuity for the entire history of life. There is replicators that genomes. So according to the scheme that I wanted, uh, yes, here, here we describe it. Colleague Puri Lopez Garcia from the University of Paris Saclay to develop these ideas and then a mathematical model, which I probably will not have. Uh, but these are basically the two uh, principal types of, prop of propagating biological entities reproducers and replicators. And the origin of life um, in, in, was, um, I believe, the transition to the new level through the merger of reproducers and mm, uh, replicators. Um, mm, uh, so, mm, uh, mm, so this, this, this starts with the uh, empty, so to speak, reproducers of mm, vesicles that harbor certain autocatalytic uh, chemical reactions and may be selected for persistence and stability, but have no genetics and Gradually, these um, 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 replicators evolve. There's this um, uh, catalyst, probably ribosomes, uh, um, and then acquiring the uh, informational uh, um, functions. Uh, um, uh, so, um, uh, um, again, the whole the whole thing here uh, um, is the. Uh, um, emergence of a new level of organization and, uh, and selection through uh, the merger of, of between two types of uh, reproducing entities. And so to speak, uh, mutual learning, the mutual adaptation uh, for coexistence. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, I think that you don't have much, that you won't have much disagreement in the community about that. But could you get a little closer to how you would, uh, how you would actually make, I um, mean, when you say this reproduces, I, I suppose they are, uh, you need to have a metabolism, you need to have an a, a energy transducer that can take resources and turn resources into building blocks uh, because for to have a physical system that can grow and, and divide you need that um, but do can you say anything more specific about that uh, in terms of how your uh, uh, your reproducers and your replicators I, I completely agree that that's I think that that's likely what what has happened but how um, how, how how do you see this happening Oh, oh, well, let me, let me take a quick step back. Um, so, um, origin of life is um, sort of considered oftentimes from two different perspectives, the metabolic perspective, sort of metabolism first, and the informational perspective, genetics first. Um, and I always have been thinking that, you know, genetics first, information was most important, um, digital information. In reality, you must start with reproducers because, as you pointed out, um, resources 
energy uh, and compartmentalization are essential for the origin of any level of complexity. That said, mm, the mm, uh, mm, reaction of, um, reactions of um, mm, uh, mm, synthesis of nucleotides and amino acids are relatively simple. Um, mm, all this um, mm, uh, occurs, uh, mm, uh, at least the simpler amino acids as well as nucleotides uh, mm, are uh, mm, very well uh, mm, synthesized uh, under abiogenic conditions. So that is, that is entirely possible. Uh, mm, and I believe this. By excluding everything else, this is what must have happened at that stage. Uh, mm, the lipid vesicles, again, fully observable in experiment, mm, um, in which uh, mm, network uh, uh, chemical reaction network persisted that part in particular um, produced nucleotides and amino acids. And nucleotides are very mm, useful molecules. Uh, mm, uh, mm, they, they uh, as in today's biological systems, they serve as cofactors for a variety of reactions. Uh, mm, uh, and, and this is probably, probably was the um, original selective value. Uh, mm, polymerization of nucleotides is also possible and opens up a new space uh, mm, that for ribosome, catal uh, mm, ribosome catalysis. And ribosome catalysis can be quite versatile uh, mm, and efficient. From the first simple ribosome catalyst, there is a difficult but necessary step to replicators. Uh, mm, to some extent, this has been done in the uh, laboratory, ribozyme polymerases exist, um, but so far no one can, uh, has made them um, highly processive and um, highly uh, um, uh, efficient. Nevertheless, um, um, since, since we do have genomes um, and we do, do, do have um, nucleic acids that have catalytic activities, ribozymes and the ribosome, RNAs, etc. Uh, I think these are the necessary steps. Yeah. Okay, so if I can sort of translate it, so what you are now, it, it, I mean, I think we don't have a genome, but we do have a catalyst. I mean, what you're what you're saying is that that this combinatorial catalyst, if I will use uh, that's the word I would use, you, you're saying that uh, either. Um, uh, what's it called? A peptide uh, replicator or, or a nucleotide? No, 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 no. no, no. There is no such thing as a peptide replicator. This should be nucleic acids. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, okay. So then let's let's limit ourselves to to a nucleotide based replicator. Yeah. So yeah. that can actually it, you you have then a combinatorial uh, possibility for for catalysis because you I mean depending on how you have the sequence put together you will have. Uh, different, um, uh, you will have different catalytic uh, properties. And, and then uh, uh, depending on which ones are better, then there'll be a, a slow connection or there'll be a, a feedback between the, uh, what's it, what's it, I mean, the, the, the nucleotide uh, system uh, that you want to replicate. And it's true, nobody has really shown how to do that yet. Uh, and then a, um, a, a metabolic system. Is that how you view it? I mean, I, 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 you are worried, I mean, I've Okay, the, the, the way we see the transition is this. Um, uh, the whole thing starts with the reproducers that have no replicators. Yeah. Um, the uh, oligonucleotides appear on the scene as ribozymes that catalyze the, uh, uh, certain reactions and uh, increase the fitness of their respective protocells, reproducers. Yeah, uh, okay. So the fitness will be further dramatically enhanced uh, uh, if, uh, if and when uh, uh, these uh, replicate, uh, the, 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 these uh, uh, polynucleotides acquire the property of properties of replicators. Uh, I, I, I cannot claim that we know how this happened in detail. We do know that this has happened, and I think there is absolutely no way 
for this to have happened outside of this context, starting the um, evolution of the reproducers and um, um, overlaying these, these replicators as symbiosis, as mutualists. I don't think there is any other way, uh, but I will not claim that you know all the details of the process. So, so I'm sorry, I, I don't want to, to monopolize, but we've been looking very much forward for your, for your presentation. And this was sort of what at least some of us were, were hoping this presentation would be about. Um, so maybe we could organize, how, how long time are you in, uh, in, uh, at, at the ECLT? Maybe we could, we could set up another meeting at some point where our community could talk to you. No, no, not, during, not during this visit. No, I, I'm leaving tomorrow. Okay. Regrettably, perhaps, or hopefully another time, maybe we develop, hopefully we develop more. You can, by the way, um, I don't know exactly your interest, but if you are interested in the origin of, um, um, in, in these models of the origin of life, you might want to look at this recent preprint that describe this in qualitative terms, but then proceeds to develop a mathematical model. Yeah, okay, so I, I don't remember. I don't think we've seen that. Uh, I, I don't think I've Probably seen Probably not, it's just appeared. I don't know, less than two weeks ago. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, well, thank, thank you. Well, thank you very much for fantastic yeah, I questions. I thought I would skip this part, but it's very interesting. But I thought that the thing though, because I'm interested in it. So that's it. I don't think there are any questions unless uh, yeah. oh, this was uh, okay. Was a complainer. So, so please join with me to thank the thank you, thank you everyone.